Hey folks, one of the big themes in our recruiting trends report for 2018 is data. No surprise to anyone, data is everywhere, is data the new oil, everyone's talking about data and insights. So today we're going to talk a little bit about data-driven recruiting and hopefully do it in a concise, quick manner so you can start practicing some of these ideas. So first of all, ask yourself this question. How often do you bring data to meetings with hiring managers, executives? Our data shows that about 60, 64% of folks in recruiting are actually using data today. So there's a huge opportunity. Can you list out right now the top 100 candidates that you would like to pursue quantitatively from one to 100? And a reason why you wanna pursue each one in that sequential order. I tried it before I dove into some of these data-driven recruiting practices and could not complete the task. Could get maybe four, five, six deep simply because none of us have a really good framework to prioritize what candidates we go after and why. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to take advantage of data that's everywhere, these data signals, and use it to your advantage to get candidates' attention quicker, get more positive response rates, and hopefully end up making better, quicker, faster hires for your hiring managers and for your company. So let's talk about how this data-driven recruiting model actually works. So there's really two main components to this model. It's quality and affinity. So let me give you a real example with real results that we ran internally. So one area within LinkedIn that we're constantly looking for great people, no surprise, is great systems infrastructure engineers. We decided, hey, let's really rely on our data to determine how we prioritize and how we spend our time. Because frankly, I don't want more candidates. I want to talk to more of the best, most highly qualified candidates I can. And this model helps with that. So here's how it works. Again, systems infrastructure is the example I'll give you. Rather than how many candidates are in your pipeline, ask yourself this question. How big is the total addressable market for a particular rec you're searching for, a particular skill set? Get really clear on that. We found, started with the 2,000 best systems infrastructure engineers in the world that met a set of criteria that we deemed important. One was the quality score, if you will, sat down with our head of engineering and said, we need you to articulate for us in a very clear, quantifiable fashion what a world-class systems infrastructure engineer is that you would hire today if you saw them. We don't want to get back and forth into calibrating what a good candidate is and frustrations building. We need you to be clear now. We need to sort of contract with you and align on that agreement, which we did. So we got this sort of threshold. Anyone who's, in our case, profile met more of that criteria, we would consider them a hot prospect, if you will. The other access is around affinity. What is affinity? It's signals you can pick up that would give you an indication that, in this case, a candidate may have a higher propensity of responding positively to you and your company. That would be, literally, do they follow your company? Has a candidate clicked on follow, in this case on LinkedIn, which statistically has meaning? Do they share content that might give a signal that hmm, they could be a good systems infrastructure engineer. And the most obvious and most overlooked signal is, does someone have a first degree connection that's meaningful on LinkedIn? Do they have relationships? So those are sort of three core components of affinity. So we looked at the best 2000 who met the quality score and had some affinity signals. And we just plotted them in this two by two. The one to many, which we won't get into today are Highly qualified, great prospects, but those are folks that we're gonna focus on marketing to, sharing content with, nurturing over time. I wanna focus on the one-to-one. -one. We put our best recruiting folks on this bucket, if you will. And interestingly, when we plotted this against the 2000 best systems infrastructure engineers, we found that 699 of the best 2000 off the charts in quality, off the charts in affinity, and they all had a first degree connection that was meaningful within LinkedIn. They know people at LinkedIn. So why does this matter? Well, lots of reasons. If you have a relationship, statistically, you're gonna be more aware of the brand, you're more likely to consider a role. So we wanted to take advantage of the fact that these warm signals existed. So what we did was we sat down with our head of engineering again and said, look, we did this actual exercise with them on the whiteboard and said, 699 of the best people in the world know your team. We're going to draft up an email 
about this strategy and the things that we are going to do together, you're going to send that email to your engineering organization, letting them know that we found out of the 2,000 best systems infrastructure engineers, you know 699 of them, recruiting will be reaching out to partner with you to see what we can do to successfully convert those prospective candidates into actual candidates. So that's one step we did to partner together with our hiring team. They had never seen this data. They were surprised to see it. It was powerful. It led to us being able to influence. Now, here's where things really started to change for me. So historically, for a lot of our outreach, we get about a 28% response rate. You reach out to someone, you give them a call, send them any sort of outreach, quarter of the time they respond. When we incorporated this data-driven recruiting mindset and model, taking advantage of the affinity signals, particularly people who had relationships, we found that our response rate was no longer 28%, it was 85%. So that was a skyrocketing statistic, the biggest leap I'd ever seen in something like this. So that changed our thinking that, hmm, this might actually be the way we should recruit, period. What's more is, not only do we get positive out outreach at almost 3x, we also found that anyone that we recruited into our process through this channel made it through our interviews faster and with more success than any other type of candidate, meaning, faster and more successfully than referrals, than applicants, than cold source candidates. And by the way, all of this data is not just some theory, it's actually now a set of features, in our case, in our LinkedIn recruiter product. Check out Spotlights and you can get a lot of this information, a lot of these signals. But if you're not bringing this to your business, if you're not bringing this to the executives or support of the hiring managers, I would contend that you're not doing our profession of talent acquisition any good, and you're surely not doing yourself any good this is an easy way to start building partnership and credibility with the business. So take this whole idea for a test drive. A, make sure you understand how many people are in your addressable pool of candidates. That's important. Secondly, know how many of those people have first degree connections at your company. We saw that nobody likes it cold and when you take advantage of those first degree connections, response rates will skyrocket. And then third, Share your data and insights like this early and often with your hiring managers and clients so you can build credibility and influence the business. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.